Great. Thank you for uh, joining us today. Um, I first wanted to just quickly describe the service and give a little bit of an overview and then hand it off to Heather and Jonathan. So we launched uh, Amazon SageMaker Ground Truth today. And Ground Truth essentially is focused on helping our customers more efficiently and more accurately label their data. And data labeling is very important in the context of training your machine learning inputs. It's a core, uh, it's a core um, input into uh, the model training process. So this is what we've heard that many of our customers have been experiencing a lot of pain with, and that led to the introduction of this service. And um, with that, I want to hand it off to Heather and Jonathan yeah. Nolis. Um, and I just want to call out before they begin that what a great partner T-Mobile was during the private beta process. They worked with us during the private beta and uh, we got some great feedback and they were one of the first customers to <laughs> kick the tires. So I'll hand it off, thanks. So uh, hi, I'm Jonathan Nolis, and yeah, it's been great working with Amazon, and it's really nice when you are in a beta, because if you don't like stuff, they just change it for you. So that's been really great. Um, so Heather and I are members of the AI at T-Mobile team. So I figured before we talk about Sage, you know, before we go into more depth about ground truth and how it really helped us, I'll give you a little background on why this tool was really important to what we did. Um, so AI at T-Mobile, our team, we were started because T-Mobile wanted to get a lot better in the AI space. We knew it was important. We knew it was going to be a future that was really going to change how a lot of our things work. So we formed a team to help facilitate that growth. And then specifically, we were part of social and messaging product development. So we were part of the team at T-Mobile. Um, we were part of the team at T-Mobile that deals with all text-based messages between customer care. So if you're on Facebook and you send a message to a care representative, or if you're on Twitter and you send a message or a text message, any of these ways where you say, hey, I have a problem with my phone, why is my bill so high, those all go to someone in customer care. And the SMPD team deals with that. And so it's a natural place to start an AI team because you have tons of data and you have a very real use case problem. Because there's all sorts of ways you can use AI to help make that better. And first off, I want to say, we don't do chatbots. T-Mobile is extremely adamant that chatbots are not a thing for us. Chatbots are a way that you get machines in front of humans, but we want to make sure that customers are connected directly to reps. That's a human-to-human -human relationship. So we don't do chatbots. Things we actually do are trying to predict when someone comes in contact with us, what is the intent of messaging us? So if someone says, why is my bill so high? How can we have a machine learning model recognize, OK, this is a billing conversation. I'm going to have all the billing information about that customer already on the screen for the representative the moment the conversation starts. Or like another example is, um, it used to be that if you messaged in some of the channels and you said, hey, T-Mobile, why is my bill so high? The first thing that would happen is an automated message would come back that says, thanks for contacting us. Before we get you to a rep, are you a customer or not? And like, of course you're a customer. You just said, why is my bill so high? And surely we could train a machine learning model to try and predict after that first message, are you a customer or not? Why are you messaging? And things like that. Um, or even when the conversation's going on, how can we predict what internal wiki articles will be useful to the rep to try and help solve the problem faster? Um, so really, for us, these are all interesting use cases. And in particular, that intent one of trying to understand why is a customer coming in? Is it billing? Is it about payment? Is it an order status question? That was, in particular, one where we really struggled because we didn't have labeled data. So at T-Mobile, what we had was millions of historic conversations. So you can think about these all as back and forth between the customers. We've had months and months and months of this data. But what we didn't have is historic labeled data. So we didn't have that this conversation was about bill, and this one was about an order unlock, or an order, uh, unlock phone, and this was an order status. And so without having those labels in advance, we couldn't just train a neural network on that data to try and predict what the new conversations would be about. So we tried other things like doing topic modeling, TF-IDF analysis, and all these ended up being really bad because what would happen is the models wouldn't come up with good topics that were relevant to the business. What we really needed is to take the list of things that were relevant to the business, like I want to add a line, why is my bill so high, what is the current status of my delivery on the order I made, take that list of topics and actually have the historic data labeled with what those things were. Um, so we kind of came to the realization that you know, at first, we didn't want to do labeling because we're like, look, we're six data scientists and machine learning engineers. Bil labeling a lot of data, like, that just doesn't feel like something we should have to do. We should be able to outsmart this by doing good topic modeling, things like that. And we came to the conclusion that we really needed a perspective shift and that 
this isn't, labeling data isn't something that giant com only giant companies can do by outsourcing the labeling to you know, places where you can get it done for real cheap. It, it can be really something that we should try embracing too. So we need a labeling to try and figure out what are the categories on these different conversations, and how, once we train a model, can we have humans go in and validate that, yes, in these examples, the model did a good job or the model did a bad job. And so to talk about how we actually ended up doing that, I'll, I'll pass it off to Heather. Uh, OK, so my name's Heather. Nolis, and I'm a machine learning engineer on the AA at Two Mobile team. And so once we decided that we wanted to label data, we were like, OK, I don't want to do this. Let's please hire somebody else. But there's a whole lot of problems with that, and that the MSA process can take forever to do. And then we have a lot of sensitive customer information that we really want to make sure is closely guarded with security guidelines. And so that didn't really seem like a good idea for us. So we're like, OK, we'll bite the bullet. We'll label ourselves. And our approach was mediocre. What we decided to do is take all of these conversations, put them in a huge Excel spreadsheet of 10,000 conversations, and make assignments. So every day we'd be like, every day we'll label 1,000 conversations each. And how this evolved is we ended up having somebody who kind of functioned as a data nanny. And so they would be like, OK, today, everyone, Heather, you're running late on your labeling. Can you please turn it back in to me? Um, Nobody's doing this section. People need to do this. Uh-oh, in the giant Excel file, two people accidentally got assigned the same thing, so you did double work. And it became super, super frustrating. And then that person's job as a data scientist is basically null and void. Like now they're some sort of weird manager and we're doing menial tasks. And then another problem that we had is like the data science and machine learning engineers that we were employing to do this are expensive, right? Like any, but any person with a sufficient understanding of English can look at a conversation and tell if it's about unlocking your phone. You don't need to have a master's degree in computer science to be able to do that. So why are we paying people to that degree? And then um, do, do, do. I grab my notes. And so then the another thing is that nobody actually wants to label data. Like, I became a computer scientist, so I didn't have to sit in front of an Excel spreadsheet for eight hours a day going through and saying, ah, oh, yes, this is about unlock. This is the 500th time I've labeled the start of a message with hi today. Like, yes, I know that's a greeting. Um, and so we tried throwing parties where we'd be like, no, we'll invite pizza, and the whole team will come, and everyone will do it. And that is the lamest party in the entire world. Nobody wants to label data. And it devolved into a lot of taxonomical arguments, because I would say, OK, um, I need to pay my bill so I can unlock my phone so I can travel to the Brazil. Is that an international message? Is it an unlock my phone message? Is it a pay my bill message? Well, I labeled it one way, but somebody in the room disagrees. So you get all these semantic arguments about what you should be labeling. It's a super nightmare, not good for team morale. And so we were really, really struggling with what the right solution to this was. And at that time, we were in conversations with Amazon Cognitive Services. And they were like, what is your number one pain point as a machine learning customer? And we were like, this won't make you happy, but our number one pain point is labeling. And they were like, hold, hold the phone. Like, I think that we actually have something you'll really love. Um, and so what ended up what Ground Truth is, is it's a really intuitive UI for getting these label jobs done fast. And you can do them yourself. You can have somebody else do it. You can have labels automatically generated to label your data for you if that's necessary. And so for us, it eliminated a few really key pay points. The first one was the ability to choose our workforce. Like we had talked about earlier, hiring another company to label T-Mobile private data that we've cleansed and we've made sure is great still doesn't feel good. And in this way, we're able to look at the vendors in the marketplace and select somebody who we know that we can trust, who has an agreement with T-Mobile, who complies with our security standards to go ahead and do that labeling job for us. The second thing is that it's fast. If we hired one person on our team to sit there and label data all day long, we could only build models as good as that person can label data. They can do 1,000 records in a week, so our model can only be built on 1,000 records. And that's really hard, but whenever you use Ground Truth, the it's almost infinitely scalable. We can send off a labeling job, and it can be 60 people at this company can be working on it all at once. It can be done in a few days. Um, we had a situation where you tried to work with an outside vendor to get some labeled data, and it actually took them three weeks to give us 1,000 labeled conversations. And when you're building deep learning models, we're looking at we'd ideally have 200,000 conversations. So it's like, cool, in 10 years, we'll get back to you, and we'll finally be able to build our model. So it's not super feasible. And then nobody likes looking at Excel documents. And so just being able to put the labeling job in a really nice UI makes it so much faster. You can just click. It's about this topic, this topic, this topic. Very, very easy. And this means that the person who was assigned to be our data nanny actually got to go back to doing their job. 
because you because since Amazon and Ground Truth manage all of this stuff, then we're able to let that happen and we don't have to keep track of who's labeling what data, like all of that is taken care of for and automated by Amazon for us. Um, we end up with higher fidelity labels because in the SageMaker Ground Truth labeling job, you can say, I want three people to look at every piece of data. So, it's, so if there's that example I gave earlier, I need to pay my bill because I want to unlock my phone so I can travel to Greece, we'll have three different people look at that and pick a label. And then it takes sort of a weighted average of those people. So it'll say, ah, person one labeled it billing, and they've been really good at that data set, so let's weight them really high. And the other two said international, but they've been labeling really poorly on this data set, so let's ignore them and go with the one person who did really well. So it's very smart about being able to get this. And since we can only be as competent in our models as we are in our data sets and our training sets, this allows us to be a lot more confident. And then there's the auto labeling capacity. And so what that means is if I've marked a conversation, I want to pay my bill as billing, I should never have to look at that again because I already labeled it once. We should have a machine learning model in the background that says, I remember that that's billing. And not only is I want to pay my bill billing, but maybe I want to make a payment is also billing. And so that's one thing that Ground Truth does, is in the background, it, it's building a machine learning model on your human-created data and then only passing the most interesting topics to humans to actually label. And so you only have to pay for the labels that are actually interesting. Um, when we were getting onboarded into this private beta, somebody said to me, the concept is not all labels are created equal. And I think that's absolutely true. Anybody in this room, you don't have to be a telecoms expert to know that if somebody says hi, that's a greeting. But there are some things that require a little bit of telecoms expertise to label, and so we should really be passing those to the experts. And so ultimately, what Ground Truth has done for us is it's been able to free up our small team of six people to do better work and to actually do the work that we were hired to do instead of doing these menial tasks of labeling. And it's allowed us to create high fidelity, deep learning models that we wouldn't have been able to otherwise. Because when you only have one person labeling data, you can only be as confident as you are in that person. If that person's a terrible labeler and they labeled sections 1,000 to 1 million on your data set, then that's something that your model remembers forever is this poor person's labels. And it's allowed us to move a lot faster. Now we don't have to wait three weeks for 1,000 conversations. We can do it in just a few days. And it's allowed us to build more specific models. So an example of this is we wanted to look at auto pay, people who are coming in to set up auto pay. And that's 0.1% of our conversations. If we were just labeling data by our hand, it would take like 20 years to get enough auto pay conversations to build a model on auto pay. But now we can be a little bit spoiled about it and be like, mm, we'll let Ground Truth take care of that. And we'll send things that we think might be auto pay conversations off to Ground Truth until we get enough labels to actually create our model, which I think is really cool. Um, and so at the end of the day, what Ground Truth really has done for us is it's allowed us to have access to these tools that bigger companies have had access to forever. We don't have to be building a self-driving car or doing something really important to have labeled data. Um, it's really a democratization of this absolutely necessary process for do building machine learning models. And so before, for me, I was like, the only people who are labeling data are Tesla, because they're building self-driving cars, and it's really important, and they have tons of money and can do whatever they want. Um, but now we all get to do it. We can all have high confidence in our models, because we have high confidence in our data sets. And so before we jump into the quick demo of how exactly you work with Ground Truth, I just want to give a thank you to my team, because I'm here representing a lot of people who worked on this project, namely James Ellison, Caitlin Dowdle, Tim O'Brien, Sai, and Fee Wynn did a lot of work on this. And so we're here speaking on behalf of a bunch of people who did a lot cooler stuff than us. So uh, now we'll jump into the demo. OK. Uh, so in this demo, we have um, two things. We have 10 conversations, hypothetical conversations that would have happened with T-Mobile, the start of them. Are there any deals? What's about to my phone? How's my service? And we have all these different categories we'd want to put it in. So given these categories and this data, let's go ahead and try doing a job. So what I did is I created an S3 bucket, and I'm going to upload that CSV file. Um, so I'm going to take that file right here, that manifest, just drop it right into bucket, and upload it. So now I have my data up on Amazon. And so now I go into SageMaker, and I go to Ground Truth, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a labeling job. So that job name, I'm going to call it um, Ground Truth Test 003. 
So the man uh, what I'm going to do is I'm then going to create a manifest file, which is basically you saying, where is the data located that you're going to label? So in this case, you actually just put the bucket name. So it would be ground truth test 003. I should have picked something shorter. And it's text. So that's going on and being created. And so that's Amazon going through, trying to parse the data, understand what's going on. This takes about 15 seconds, so I'm just kind of filling it up a little bit with talk, but well, there's other good stuff. <laughs> part of the processing here is being able to render the text on the screen in a really nice manner. And so you can imagine if you're doing something with video, it might take a little bit longer, but. Yeah, um, should be almost done. Uh, <laughs> there we go. And so I'm going to say, all right, let's use this manifest. So I'm going to set the output location for once I label it. And I'm going to do, again, the same bucket. And then I'm going to use an IAM role that has access to the bucket and can run everything. So for additional configuration, um, so you have a couple options. You could label everything in the data. You could do a random sample. You could use a SQL query to say only specific things in the data. For us, let's just do everything. You can also encrypt the output if you feel like it. I don't. Um, and then the task we're going to select is we're going to do a text classification. So we're going to want someone to go through, read this text, and tag it. So then I'm going to select the workers. And this is exactly the stuff Heather was talking about. You can either use public with Mechanical Turk. You could go private, which is just going to be T-Mobile. Or you can do a vendor-managed company, which is some outside company that has a partnership with AWS. So for us, we're going to go private. And we're going to use a pre-selected team, which is just me. <laughs> but you can imagine that team could be 10 people within your company or something special. Um, you can also enable that automatic data labeling to label things once the machine learning model thinks it's got an idea of what's going on. Um, but with 10 labels that are things that doesn't make sense. And I'm going to have just one worker. So then I actually set up the tool. And so what that one worker means is oh. that one person will look at that individual label. It doesn't mean that there's only one person in the job. So when we were doing this, our standard was five. So we wanted five people to look at every single data point, And then we would take the weighted average, essentially, of what that answer was to end up being our final official label. Uh, so and then I go in and I say, label the conversation. And you know, I put in each one of the labels I want, billing and payment, device, network, and et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and then I hit Submit. And then what that does is it goes and it goes into everyone on that team. And it's going to say, OK, you have a new labeling job available. So I already have one in progress. It takes a couple of minutes to start that. So I already have one in progress. And so now think of me as Mr. Labeler 7. Um, so I'm a person who's unrelated to the setting that up. I'm just going to go in and label. And so then I go and start working. And I have this nice tool here where I have the instructions that I inputted, this particular conversation, and then I can go through and label. I'd like to know the balance of my phone. So that's a billing and payment question. Submit. Um, hi, I'd like to remove the Apple service watch, billing and payment. And so the idea is everyone does all of this, and you do this a bunch of times, and eventually you complete your task. Once you complete your task, you can then go in. And so you oh. can imagine if you had auto labeling enabled, they would start with really boring examples like what we just gave. But as time goes on, you expect to only get the super, super interesting ones. And so I think with Mechanical Turk, it equals out to about one cents a label. And, but anything that you can have the machine do is infinitely cheaper. So the better you can get that model in the beginning, the better off you are. Yeah. So once you've done that, maybe you've used auto-labeling. At the end, you get your text. You get the labels, the confidence, which can depend on if there are multiple people labeling, if they all agree or not. Um, and then ultimately, you can go back in your S3 bucket. And let me pick another one where it's already done. You can go back in your S3 bucket. And in here, you're going to have the annotations in a nice JSON file that you can pop open. And that's you know, row one, this is the label, this is the confidence. Row three, this is the label, this is the confidence. And so that's all the stuff that we would have taken hours in Excel trying to keep track of. It's all done in a very nice, efficient way. And so this is exactly the tool that we needed at T-Mobile to help us take those conversations and go from having to do this gross manual task to this nice, efficient thing that we were hoping should have been easy, but a tool didn't exist until this one. And the, the important thing that I would like to reiterate is how scalable this is. So instead of taking three weeks to get 1,000 labels, it'll take a few hours, a few days, whatever. And if you work in machine learning, you know how important really high fidelity labels are. And so to me, that's pretty invaluable, because it lets me do exactly what I like to do, which is building models, and not what I don't like to do, which is staring at Excel spreadsheets. Yeah. yeah. So thank you. <laughs>